larger learning rate can be a mechanism for doing regularization. So if we look here at loss and at theta, we might have something like this. So if we have a large learning rate, it can move us around in these broad areas and stay in these broad areas. Okay, if we're in a low area, sorry, a narrow area, it's more likely to take us out of that area. Very narrow areas may tend not to generalize well because it's very specific on those particular thetas and it may be very dependent on the x's. Whereas if we had a broad area, it can be uh, more generalized. So larger learning rates can lead to that. And why would a large learning rate lead us to one of these? Well, because if we're here and we have a large learning rate, it may take us out, you know, let's say to, to here. Or if we're here, our large learning rate may just go here or here, and we can head back in here. The thought is we're going to escape narrow places and end in wide places. End in wide places because wide places, if we take large learning rates, it's going to be large steps and we'll still stay within that area. So once we get into one of these plateaus, we'll tend to stay in one of these plateaus. And since it's a wide plateau, we, we think it will tend to, to generalize um, better. The problem with large learning rates is something like this. We, we may have a uh, underfitting situation in the sense that the training loss may be higher than it could otherwise be. So ideally what we would do is increase the power, uh, the size of the model, and one hopes that would sort of open up larger wide areas and low areas, which is our, which is our goal. So this is really just a hand wavy idea of why large learning rates might need lead to better generalization.